The core mission of Bigelow is to understand the way in which the ecosystems of the world's oceans respond to change. We're really trying to understand the smallest organisms that inhabit the oceans. Uh, we would call them the plankton, and they range in size from one or two millimetres down to the viruses in the ocean. These organisms play an important part in the global biogeochemical cycle of nutrients and elements, and they're also affected by environmental change significantly. The three areas that we're going to be looking at are marine microbiology and blue biotechnology, ocean biogeochemistry and climate change, and ocean health. And we're going to develop new facilities to be able to house uh, these capabilities with state-of-the-art laboratories. The new location will be at East Booth Bay, and we've received funding from both state and federal authorities to do that. The new development will also house the Centre for the Culture of Marine Phytoplankton, where we have nearly 3,000 strains of marine phytoplankton housed in culture and available to researchers and industry around the world. Microorganisms are the oldest and the most diverse forms of life on this planet. They're also critical for the health of larger organisms like ourselves, and they have enormous potential in the biotechnology applications, so looking for new natural products and energy sources is primarily looking at microbes. The Single Cell Genomic Center is the first and the only center of this kind, and we formed it just over a year ago to make single cell genomics technology available to the growth scientific community. In the first year, we served uh, over 20 organizations, and uh, we've been analyzing over 100,000 of single cells in this period of time. Most microbes, over 99% of them in the oceans or any other environment, do not grow in cultures. So we cannot grow them on petri dishes or, or test tubes. And the existing methods to study uncultured microbes, like metagenomics, are not suitable to go beyond the individual genes. But if we want to go beyond that into the multiple genes or entire genomes, uh, that hasn't been a possibility. By sequencing DNA from individual cells, we open that enormous possibility. Bigelow, I think, is unique in that it's a very open structure. It really encourages interdisciplinarity. It encourages us to work between lab groups. And our sort of part in this larger picture is to focus on biogeochemistry um, on an oceanic, on a global scale. I'm interested in the interactions between plankton and largely metals in the ocean. So by plankton I'm talking about single-celled organisms and we're interested in their requirements for metals, in particular iron, but also zinc and nickel and manganese, some of the other metals that they need to build some of the proteins and enzymes that they require, much like humans do. And so we examine uh, how they take up those metals, what biochemical mechanisms they use, we examine what their requirements are. And we're also interested in the mechanisms by which these cells return the metals back to the ocean. We were the, the first laboratory to use synchrotron X-ray fluorescence microscopy to determine the elemental composition of individual phytoplankton cells from the ocean. And we did that in collaboration with physicists and with material scientists during my graduate work. And we've now taken it to several of the major ocean basins to address major environmental questions with global ramifications using this single cell technique. My research deals with the ecophysiology of harmful algae bloom organisms, how they respond to nutrients, why we seem to be seeing an increase in these blooms of these species globally, which are impacting these communities, um, the underlying mechanisms, whether it's behavior, how these cells swim, to how they make a living, how they get nutrients. Harmful algal blooms can be any one of 300 different species. Each is different, has a different ecology, different toxins. That results in a rather complex field. What you're looking at is an electron micrograph shot of a type of HAB, harmful algae bloom cell, Karenia. This is a species that blooms in the Gulf of Mexico. It's toxic, it has huge environmental and economic impacts locally in Florida. Here in Maine, we deal with another type of red tide called Alexandrium. Uh, it also has huge economic impacts. It doesn't kill fish like the Florida red tide, but it can kill you. So it has closed down shell fisheries in Maine, and that's why Bigelow is involved with the research on harmful algae. Uh, it's something that has direct impacts on ocean policy and management, essentially from a global level down to the community level. 
I'm interested in the fundamental role that viruses play in ocean ecosystems. If you take a, a bottle of water or a, a teaspoon of water, there's somewhere in the region of uh, 10 million to 100 million viruses in that teaspoon of seawater. People get a little bit worried about that, but it's part of the natural biological process in the ocean. A lot of what we're doing here at the lab is looking at some of the molecular mechanisms behind the, the propagation of these viruses. And we're interested in the genomic makeup, the gene complement that's in these viruses, trying to understand what drives all the biogeochemical processes and how these viruses are so successful in the environment. If you didn't have any loss processes in the ocean, it would turn into a, an ocean of uh, sludge. Uh, you, you need to have a loss process to release organic material in the ocean so that it uh, allows it to be recycled, remineralized by the microbial communities. Pigolo is unique in bringing together a collection of scientists that have right at their fingertips the latest state-of-the-art methodologies for examining the plankton populations in the world ocean. That together with our desire to travel to all the world's oceans to understand critical areas of environmental change are really forcing a major research program here at the laboratory.